Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about back pain, which is one of the high yield conditions. So make sure that you are aware with all the differentials and know about management of all the different types of differentials. So you can see that at the top of the list here is Cauda equina syndrome. It is at the top of the list, not because it's very common, it's actually rare, but it is the single most serious condition related with back pain that you need to rule out. So this is the red flag here, okay? In every single patient that presents with back pain, you need to rule out Cauda equina syndrome. If you fail to rule this out, if you forget about this, then you are going to fail the back pain station, okay? So please remember this. Okay, so now what is Cauda equina syndrome? As you are all aware that we have a bunch of nerves at the end of the spinal cord, which are called as Cauda equina, and they're responsible for the function of your bowel, your bladder, and responsible for the sensation of the skin around the uh, perineal area. Okay, so sometimes what happens is when there is severe trauma or there are metastases to the vertebral column, this bunch of nerve is compressed and the patient presents with injury retention, fecal incontinence and saddle anesthesia. So saddle anesthesia means that numbness in the genital area and around the bottoms. Okay, so this is cardioquina syndrome. Now disc prolapse. Disc prolapse is also known as slip disc. So as you all know that um, in between the uh, vertebrae, we have intervertebral disc and sometimes because of lifting heavy weights, it prolapses. Okay, it can be because of lifting heavy weights, it can be because of old age, um, and it can be because of the patient being actually obese, okay? So there are different risk factors for disc prolapse. Um, so what happened in disc prolapse is the intervertebral disc, it slips out and it pinches on the nerves, which causes pain, shooting pain that radiates to the leg, okay? And there are clicking sounds, right? So the patient will complain of clicking sounds and shooting pain in the back that radiates to the legs. Okay, so trauma. Trauma, as you are all aware that uh, any injury during sports or anything can cause muscul musculoskeletal trauma and it is a very, very common cause of back pain. Okay, ankylosing spondylitis. Again, it is one of the inflammatory conditions and in this condition, the patient will be young and he will present with morning stiffness. Multiple myeloma. So multiple myeloma, it will be the patient age will be old. So opposite of the ankylosing spondylitis, the patient will be old, at least 60 or above. And the patient will present with um, polyuria and polydipsia. Okay, polyuria and polydipsia because in multiple myeloma, there is also hypercalcemia that causes dehydration. So polyuria and polydipsia and flaws. Flaws are basically cancer symptoms that we, in every, in every cancer patient and whenever we are Suspecting cancer, we ask about flaws. So flaws is basically abbreviation of uh, fever, lumps and bumps in the body, that is lymph nodes, appetite loss, weight loss, and night sweats, okay? So patient with multiple myeloma will have back pain, the patient will be old, he will have fever, lumps and bumps in the body, appetite loss, weight loss, and sweats, night sweats, okay? And polyuria and polydipsia as well. Now osteomyelitis, uh, osteomyelitis of the vertebral column can present with fever and back pain and tenderness. So osteomyelitis is basically an infection, as you are all aware. So I have written six uh, important differentials of back pain, but you don't need to ask each and every one in each and every station. Uh, Cauda equina, you must ask, but the rest of the, um, out of the six differential, you can ask like three or four. <clears throat> Okay, so history taking. So whenever a patient present with any type of pain, we ask Socrates, okay? So the back pain patient, we will ask Socrates. We will uh, rule out our differential diagnosis. So we'll ask questions. We will ask him, the patient about, you know, um, any soiling. Um, are you able to pass urine normally? Any soiling of your clothes with stool? Any numbness in the private area? We will ask about any clicking sound, okay? Pain radiating to the legs that, that will be covered during Socrates, okay? A morning stiffness, we will ask about any um, injury recently, all right? And any fever. Then past history, uh, you will ask about, you know, um, has this ever happened before? And have you been diagnosed with any medical condition at all? Then the P3, which is Mectosa and Cephedex. Okay, um, another thing is, there can be acute back pain and there can be chronic back pain. Like um, disc prolapse can be very chronic. Similarly, ankylosing spondylitis 
can be very chronic. Okay, so you need to know about whether the pain is acute or whether the pain is chronic. So if the pain is chronic, you need to have a special focus on the psychosocial of the patient. Okay, so this part here, Mephtosa, the OSA, it stands for psychosocial. You need to go a bit um, detailed into the, into the psychosocial part of the patient. So ask him, what do you do for a living? How is it affecting your job? Are you able to do your activities of daily living? And how is it affecting your mood? Okay. So not only in back pain, in any chronic pain, in any chronic health condition, ask about job, ask about activities of daily living and how is it affecting it? And ask about mood. Okay. Because any chronic pain and any chronic health condition is a very important risk factor for depression. All right. Okay, so once you have completed your history taking, the next part is examination. So uh, in back pain, you need to do four types of examination. Number one is observations. Number two is examination of the back, back of the back itself. Sorry, I forgot in the back here. Uh, so after observation, you will examine the back itself. Okay, then you will examine the back passage. Then you will do straight leg grace test. And the fourth one is neurological examination. Okay, straight leg raise test is basically when the patient is lying flat and he raises his leg at 90 degrees. So between 30 and 70 degrees um, of leg raising, there is pain. So we call, we say that the straight leg raise test is positive. This test is positive in um, a disc prolapse, okay? All right, so after examination, you will come to the management part. So uh, I, I have already told you that during the management part, you start your management with explaining your uh, diagnosis of the patient in simple words, okay? And then you provide the management and at the end, you safety net, okay? So if the patient presents with musculoskeletal trauma, it's very simple to explain. You will tell the patient that you have injured your muscles during playing sports and that's why it's causing pain. Uh, you will do an X-ray of the back bone just to rule out fractures. You will do, give painkiller, that is paracetamol, and ask the patient to rest. You will arrange a follow-up at two weeks and refer to physiotherapy if there is no improvement. But you will safety net for cardioquina syndrome here. You will tell the patient that if you feel like there is um, numbness in your private parts, or you are not able to hold your stools, uh, or you are not able to pass urine, then please uh, call triple nine or go to the emergency department. Disc prolapse. So disc prolapse, you will explain to the patient that your back pain is because of slip disc, which means that a soft cushion of tissue between the bones in your spine have pushed out. Now, the management here is MRI. So we will first of all do an MRI and then uh, give some painkiller, ask the patient to rest and send for physiotherapy. Arrange a follow-up at six weeks. If there is no improvement during six weeks, then we will involve neurosurgery. Okay, safety net uh, regarding cardiac virus syndrome here as well. All right, so there was your disc prolapse. Now, multiple myeloma. So in multiple myeloma, uh, it will be a kind of suspected cancer station. I will uh, do a detailed video on suspected cancer station later. But here I will give you just a brief overview. So in this, uh, you cannot give a definitive diagnosis without bone marrow biopsy. So you will just tell the patient that I am suspecting a blood disorder called multiple myeloma. You will arrange some blood tests that is CBC, ESR, and urine electrophoresis for Binstron protein. And you will provide pain relief. You will urgently refer to the hematologist for bone marrow biopsy. And here also you will safety net for Cauda Equina syndrome. Now, Cauda Equina syndrome in itself, uh, as it is emergency condition, so I don't know whether it will come in the exam or not, but um, cardi but just for the completion sake, I will just discuss a little bit of management here. Carda equina syndrome is basically, you will tell the patient that a bundle of nerves called carda equina at the bottom of your spinal cord got compressed. These nerves control our bowel, bladder function and sensation in the genital area. Uh, so this is a serious condition. We are going to admit you today. I will inform my seniors and they will give you a medication called steroids immediately. We will arrange for MRI scan of your back and we will also involve the neurosurgical department. So that was all about your back pain. And if you have any questions, then please drop it in the comment section and I will answer. Thank you.